13 years without football and now an undefeated season. How exactly does a team do that? Well, could it be inspiration from some fallen war heroes? Tonight, Dan Rescone takes us just across the Utah border for some answers. A small town is Montpelier, Idaho, just north of Bear Lake or east of Preston, Idaho. It's here where football has been reborn in a whole new way, and many are crediting it to dozens of fallen war heroes. Oh, Montpelier is an old railroad town. 160 miles northeast of Salt Lake City. It's a nice little close-knit community. Is a little town with a lot of character. All right, let's go guys, get to class. Trayson, love the hair. And a lot of love for sports. <laughs> Just ask. Every assignment in, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. The athletic okay. director here at Bear Lake Middle School a school of only 250 students. Sports is a big part of our town. But for the past 13 years, Bear Lake Middle School has been without football. <laughs> that is until this year. Yeah. Thanks to a team of parents, football <laughs> is back at Bear Lake Middle School. And not just back, Hit. but back with purpose. You getting ready? All inspired. Yes, I can't hear y'all. Yes, sir. By the new seventh grade head coach, Dave Lindsay. Give me two linemen. A military veteran from a small town in Texas. Three steps and out. The Bear Lake Three Cubs are gearing up for their second to last game of the season. They are currently undefeated. In fact, before this game, no team has even scored against them. Hey, right. 318. Luck? Great coaching? Or just maybe? Does it have something to do with these? Little American flags of fallen war heroes placed on the back of each of the boys' helmets, listing their name and where they were killed in action. I play for Matthew Axelson, Lieutenant Commander Eric S. Christensen, First Lieutenant Kyle G. West. Coach Lindsay calls it Petty Officer Second Class James E. So. Heroes on helmets. Staff Sergeant Scott Studman. A concept. It means that we get to represent our country and the man that died defending our country. The boys say. I take pride in wearing his name on my helmet. Is giving them. His name can live again through me playing football. New inspiration to play. It makes me feel like football has a purpose now. It's not just about winning and losing. It's about representing something bigger than just a sport. The boys are asked to get to know how their hero lived and died. In high school, he played football, baseball, and was in the FFA. He's taught us that no one stands alone. The whole reason we're here doing what we're doing today has to do with those who paid the ultimate sacrifice to uh, make sure that our freedoms are still still preserved. That purpose is, is spreading across town. Oh, I think it's a great thing. Just stop by VFW Post 3884, where these <laughs> Vietnam vets couldn't be prouder of the football team. It's very warming to your soul to see people be and still be there that, that way. He come in here and got them boys to loving him and loving America. That shows me there's still some type of patriotism in the United States. Remove your hats and honor our country as the VFW. And to show their support, those from the post are also the honor guard to start off the home game. And before the boys take to the field, Chief Petty Officer Daniel Healy, United States Navy. Each fallen hero's name is announced. And Master Sergeant Robert Horrigan, United States Army, Iraq. Now it's game time. Cubs versus the undefeated Milad Knights. One of the first plays of the game. Go, go, go! The Cubs run it in for a touchdown. When they're tired, they look and see the name on the back of a helmet in front of them, and they realize, hey, that guy didn't quit. And uh, it kind of helps keep them going. Who are we? Who are we? 13 years without football, and now a team of boys who play for more than just themselves. This is about winning in life. By the way, the Cubs won 34 to 6. Now, the eighth grade team is also doing the same thing. The 55 players carry all the names of the Navy SEALs and Army air crew killed during Operation Red Wing in Afghanistan in 2005. I spoke with one of the soldiers' mothers who lives in Texas about what these boys are doing, and she was just overwhelmed that her son would be thought of and remembered in such a way. Mark, Shauna, back to you. Such a sweet story. <laughs> yeah, great group of kids, great coach, and a great cause. Uh, Dan, thank you very much.